Hello, it's Amy from A Star Reads, and it is still day 11. I just finished doing my day three vlog, and you know, I gotta get started on the next one right away. This is a month long challenge. So I finished the book of three, and if you did not get a chance to watch that, it was a lot of fun. Go ahead and check it out. I'll link it above and down below. And now I'm working on the fourth day of Christmas my true love gave to me, Genius Birds. And this is a popular science nonfiction book, and I'm really excited about that because not only do I love nonfiction, I also love popular science, and I really love learning about bird behavior and animal behavior. So this is like a total win-win-win. I can't wait to get into the book. But in the meantime, I have to work. So I wanted to show you really quickly what I'm doing for work at the moment because it's a lot of fun. So I work for a tribe and we handle the natural resources and my particular job is to help with outreach and specifically outreach with the tribal school. One of the things we need to talk about with the fourth and fifth graders is watershed. We're hoping to send out these cute little watershed kits to the kids. They would just get a ball of clay and they get to make their own watershed. So I was testing it out and I made my own and I even made like a little lake, which would end up being a lake if you when you pour water into this. And hopefully when you drip a little bit of water on top, it'll show that it goes down the mountain, into the creeks, into the main river sections, and then out to the deltas, and then out to the ocean. Because you know, these poor kids are at home and we usually have field trips. Our department does field trips for most of our activities and they don't get to go on any field trips this year. And that's a bummer. It's a bummer for us, it's a bummer for them. So anyways, this is your science video. You just learned about watersheds, you're gonna be learning about bird behavior, and I hope you like science, because if you don't, well, that's just too bad. <laughs> so look at, I've got a fireplace tonight. We decided it'd be a fun thing to spend this weekend at one of our timeshares, which is like 10 minutes away from our house. So it's kind of like a staycation and all the public spaces are closed here. So we're just really staying in the timeshare. We just finished watching The Grinch. Now I'm probably gonna read until I fall asleep. I brought my TBR game as a project. I have my books. We bought a whole bunch of Christmas movies. I'm also doing a virtual 5K. I'm doing the Jingle Bell Run. And yeah, that's kind of the weekend plans is just doing the same exact thing, but with a different view. <laughs> day 12 and uh, I'm working on The Genius of Birds and I'm enjoying it so far. It's my type of book, so it feels great. I don't know how fast I'll read it because nonfiction books, traditionally, I don't read them as quickly, but I haven't read a book like this in a while and it's like a breath of fresh air. So I love, 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 love books like this. I'm just working through the introduction right now, but I'm really excited to see what kind of things I can learn from this book. So now it's have the calendar time. I want my chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing about? Grumpy. <laughs> hey, well, that's breakfast. <laughs> yeah, time for breakfast. <laughs> day 11, 12? Day 12. Wow, okay, I can't believe it's already day 12. Ooh, it's Ooh. a praline. Ooh, we like these. Those are definitely one of my favorites. How come yours is on its side? Oh, now it's on. <laughs> okay, good. You're so weird. one yesterday. Oh my god, they were right next to each other. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I mean, I love this pin. <laughs> but two? That's two, two So minutes. mom did say that she thinks she accidentally got some doubles and I just think it's funny that it was the, the very next one. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> but it is still a beautiful pin. I mean, this is my favorite pin of all the pins I've opened at this point. It's just such a pretty pin. Well, I think we can give that to one of our pretty friends. I got mine twice in a row too. Didn't I get the girl yesterday? No, I don't think that was yesterday, was it? Yeah, I think so. And now I got Wreck-It Ralph. One of my very favorite movies. So I love Wreck-It Ralph. that is the third one in that set. Oh, he's so angry because nobody loves him and don't Poor invite him Ralph. to the parties or anything. Dip some breakfast. And we are doing COVID-19 style eating. <laughs> <laughs> this is our view. We found a beautiful spot at the end of Drayton Harbor. That is White Rock over there, that's Canada, because we're out right on the border of Canada.
of the birds she's bringing up in here is called a grackle and this is a different variety of grackle because it's found on Barbados but one of my favorite birds in Texas when I lived in Texas were the they're like I think they're called boat tailed grackles then they do really really well in urban settings you can find them mostly like in HEB which is a grocery store parking lots they are everywhere and most people don't like them. They think they're obnoxious, but I think they're hugely charming and have so much character. I think they're the coolest birds. They're loud, they're fun to watch. They're so, so cool. Okay, moment of truth. According to this one study that this guy was doing, what are some of the smartest birds? Well, corvids, that's no surprise. You know, ravens, crows, those are, I think we can all agree that those are some of the smartest birds. But then our grackles, my little buddies, the grackles. See, they're great. They're great birds. <laughs> There's a few things that I am feeling about it right now. Maybe I just want to mention that because I might forget. <laughs> the first thing is that it's a little jargon heavy. I feel like she doesn't necessarily explain everything she's talking about and some of the words she's using. And for people who are not biologists or biology loving, some of the concepts she's talking about or the words she uses might need a little further explanation. 267 pages for a book on bird behavior is pretty small and I feel like there's certain areas where she needs to elaborate a little more and not assume everybody knows what she's talking about. I really like the puns she uses. She uses a ton of bird puns, which is really cute and some kind of cheesy jokes. And she's really spending a lot of the time right now trying to convince you that birds do have a certain level of intelligence, that they had a bad rap for being bird brains. That is not an accurate depiction of bird intelligence, bird cognitive abilities. So it is really good. And I've definitely learned a few new things that I didn't know anything about. Some of them about humans actually. So <laughs> that's interesting. And I'm enjoying this. I'm just, I was just thinking about some of the things that I feel based on reading other science nonfiction books, what things about this are maybe slowing my reading down a little bit. And those were the things that I could think of. Okay, this is super cool. So she's talking here about a duel between a crow and a Stellar's Jay. It's basically an instance where these birds are using a tool as a weapon against each other. So uh, there was this crow that was feeding at this bird feeder that a lot of the birds like to go to. The Stellar's Jay was trying to stop there, but the crow was taking its sweet time. So at first the Stellar's Jay tried to kind of like dive bomb it and get it to leave. But when it didn't, it went over to a dead tree and pulled off a stick, held the blunt end in its mouth and tried to jab the crow with the sharp end. And then it dropped the stick and then the crow picked up the stick with the sharp end pointing out of its mouth and tried to jab the Stellar J back and then started chasing after it with the stick. <laughs> I think that's incredible. I've never heard about them using tools as weapons, except for like dropping, you know, trying to drop rocks or things on people's heads, animals' heads, but not like this, not like a little mini sword. It's so cute. I, I mean, cute in a sense. <laughs> Good morning, it's day 13 and I'm about 95 pages into The Genius of Birds. And now that I'm actually in a chapter where she's talking about one topic, I'm really starting to enjoy it. I feel like her first two chapters, they were a little too broad, but now that she's focused on one specific topic, which she's talking about tool making and tool using in birds, like using tools to get food and do other things with, I'm really, really enjoying this section. Day 13. <gasps> That's a big one. I got it! What was that? <laughs> I got it! What'd you get? I got Minnie in this series that we've been watching on Hello Robin. Oh, Hello Robin. And she's been showing this pin on her pin board and I've been wanting it. Yay! 
Yay! <laughs> yes, and mom doesn't even realize that she was collecting this set. She has three already of this set, <laughs> and she had no idea. She's like, I've never seen that set before. And I'm like, yeah, you have three of those. So now she has four. <laughs> Yay. Of this set she doesn't remember and ever Minnie's, seeing before. Minnie's my girl. Minnie is her favorite. All right, so I got another one for part of the ink and paint set. This is from the old movie Melody Time, which this story is in particular is about Johnny Appleseed. And it was done in 1948. And we're just, we're loving the ink and paint series because they're just so pretty and well done. Great pens. And I do love all the old movies. So this is very nostalgic as well. <laughs> Okay, so it's late on Sunday and I'm getting ready to go to sleep. It's been a long day, I'm a good long day. Uh, after we checked out of the timeshare, we ended up coming home and I read for a little while and then I kind of needed a break from reading. So I actually put the book down and binge watched Gilmore Girls while I worked on my TBR game. So I actually made it pretty far. Here, let me show you. I think I started around here working on my little prompts and then I did all of this Whew. all of these so I'm getting there I have just this section left all the way through there to the end and I've got to do some stuff here and then I want to make I think I want to get some cute stickers and stuff to like put a book in this guy's hand or something like that you know kind of make it look a little fun and cute but I'm getting there it feels good my TBR games coming along I'm up about page 120 in the book which I'm getting close to halfway so I'm doing pretty good in that I'm gonna keep reading that tomorrow and I've got work we really didn't get a chance to finish decorating and doing some of the other stuff around the house that we need to do like and then Christmas cards and all that kind of stuff so it's gonna be a busy week but gonna get stuff accomplished, get my book number four done so I can move on to book number five. I also had a bit of wine this evening with my Gilmore Girls, and so that was nice and relaxing too. So, time for bed. Oh, another praline. I did have a lot of these pralines when I was filling this thing up. They were really good. Flounder. And there's still something in there. I got BB-8. I happen to love little BB-8. And this one says, be a hero. Zero. <gasps> With little Jack Skellingtons on it. Oh, and look, he's on the seat. Oh, oh what's he holding? No, it's it's the, remember his nose lights up. His nose is a little pumpkin. Oh, how cute. All right, so it's day 14, and I'm excited because I got a great pin. Love my pin. I wanted to give you a cute little tidbit from the genius of birds right now. The section I'm on right now is talking about sociability of birds and how being social can increase their intelligence level to brain size. In particular, the section I'm reading right now is about scrub jays. And if you know scrub jays, they're the loud, obnoxious ones that are always hopping around and getting themselves into trouble. They'll try to cheat a cat out of its meal by going up to the cat, pecking at the cat's tail. When the cat turns around to try to catch the bird, the bird will jump forward and steal the cat's food and run away laughing. So I thought that was funny because, yeah, that's kind of how I think about scrub jays. They're definitely pains in the butt. I've gone camping so many times, and actually I'm thinking more of stellar jays, but jays in general. You know, you're sleeping, it's like four in the morning, and all of a sudden there's a whole bunch of jays right above your tent making tons of noise, waking everybody up, and fighting over a whole bunch of different kinds of foods and things. So yeah, jays, I, even though I told you I love grackles and they're really obnoxious and annoying, I don't actually like jays that much. They're annoying. <laughs> they're genuinely annoying. <laughs> but it's fun to learn about them, and yes, they're very intelligent birds, so. I guess I gotta give them respect for that. <laughs> so the section I'm reading right now is about how birds learn how to sing. And it's very similar to the way that humans learn how to talk. I think this is a really interesting section because it's also talking about how when the birds are little teeny babies, how their brains are trying to form this bird song by listening and imitating, which is exactly the same as infants do. They listen and then they try to start imitating and it kind of, the process is the same with birds and with humans, which is really interesting because our brain systems are quite different. So this is what they call convergent evolution where even though we are so far removed from birds, we've evolved the same type of system separately. Birds have evolved it separately than humans, but it's basically the same process. I'm really into this. Like I said, it started out a little slow for me, but since I've gotten into the main topic chapters, 
I feel like she did a really good job explaining things and her examples are fantastic. One thing I find totally fascinating about language when it comes to birds is that since they learn their language from like their parents or other birds in their area, there actually are accents and dialects that are very specific to their own region. Say the same type of bird in one part of the country won't really mate with one from the other side of the country because they're looking for one that has a dialect that's similar to theirs, which I just find fascinating. The interesting things about language that we feel are so nuanced in humans can be found in birds. They're doing some of the same things we are. It's so cool. We finally finished decorating the Christmas tree. And in honor of birds for my bird book, we put this little pretty guy up on the tree. So he's hanging up there with our little star. We got a whole bunch of pretty ornaments going on. And we even decorated the table. Mom did this little accent table. And we added a couple of other things. So we're done. So this evening I've been reading The Genius of Birds. I'm about page 210. There's 266 pages total, so I'm getting there. But I'm gonna take a little bit of a break because my eyes are getting a little tired. So I'm actually gonna start working on that pile back there which are all the books that I have that I need to kind of categorize and organize and see what all I have so that I don't buy the same book or if I have it, then I should read it. <laughs> so I'm gonna go through my books and start organizing those. Project I wanted to do in December. All right, here's the disaster that is now the living room. Got some organization though, I got some those are all my nonfiction and a lot of classics. And these are the ones that have, we tend to have a lot of books like from travel places we've gone to, like little things like this, little booklets that tell about the place. We have so many of those, uh, like Nemea and some other places we've gone to. There's these like travel booklet thingies, which we really love. But what do you do with those? Like, do you have any suggestions? Do you just go back and read them to remember that trip? I guess they're more of like a coffee table book. But I was it'd be kind of cool if there was something we could actually, you know, use them for. Anyways, I'm tired. <laughs> All right, it is day 15 and I'm going to finish The Genius of Birds today. Then I'm going to pick 5 golden rings. I'm going to finally get to my fifth book. Whoo! I can't believe the month is already halfway over. It's going really quickly. And look, baby Yoda's gotten into the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> so we're opening our pins right now and I want to show you what we got. I guess who goes first? You went first yesterday. I know, it's you. I haven't looked. <laughs> she has no patience. I'm a kid. <laughs> I've never aged. Okay, what did I get? Moment of truth. Moment of truth. Oh my god, I love it. Oh, that is beautiful. <laughs> wow. Okay, this is my new favorite pin that I've gotten. So I am a big fan of Fantasia. I really love a lot of old Disney. And this is a beautiful pin with me, the ballerina. <laughs> oh, that is so amazing. I love it. I love it. Okay, <laughs> yours is not going to be as good as this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. I mean, it's going to be good, but not that good. Ooh, limited release. And it's a Fantasia 80th anniversary. I love it. <gasps> oh, how cute it is as good as that. It's Mike. Love him. Mom does love Monsters, Inc. So. I love the movie. Okay, so I have finished The Genius of Birds and I really enjoyed it. It didn't necessarily start out strong or end strong but the real meat of this was the winner. And so because of that, I probably would give it about a 3.75. I've been wavering between 3.75 and four. It was definitely a four until I read the ending and it just wasn't as strong as the middle section of this. So 3.75 is still really good. And I highly recommend this book if you want to learn more about bird behavior. I was impressed that there was a lot in here that I didn't learn from my animal behavior classes. And so it was a lot of fun for me reading this because there were things that I had never heard of before and I was really excited to read that. I felt like I did have to rush through it a little quicker than I may have wanted to because you know I have this goal of trying to get through all 12 books. And nonfiction just tends to take longer to read. But ultimately, I feel like I got a really good experience with this. All right, it's that time again. On the fifth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me five golden rings. Do you say golden or do you say gold? I know it's done both ways. I've always said golden rings, but some people say gold rings. 
Anyways, I don't think it matters. Either works, right? I'm really excited about this. Let's talk about the three books I could possibly get. So the first one for five is Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut Jr. And I actually don't know anything about this. I know it's a classic. I know that it's satirical and that it is anti-war, but I don't really know what this story is all about. And it says, centering on the infamous firebombing of Dresden. So that sounds pretty heavy. <laughs> but I have wanted to read this for a very long time and who knows, this could be the time. The book that I could possibly end up reading is The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. And I have had a few votes for this one in the sense that I know a few people that are hoping that I pull this one. So it's a very well-loved series, the Dark Materials series. And I have surprisingly never read this. I think this is a middle grade fantasy. And there's a girl named Lyra who goes to the north and she is trying to help save her friend Roger who gets kidnapped by gobblers and she's trying to help her uncle Azrael to build a bridge. I mean, that's all I got from the synopsis and I don't really know what is going on in this book. Finally is The Postman Always Rings Twice by James M. Kane. And this kind of sounds sort of like a mystery noir sort of story. I'm thinking more film noir, but I don't know what that's called in books. <laughs> this was actually written in 1934 and it's a short story. It's under 200 pages, so that's convenient. It's a tale of a drifter who stumbles into a job, an erotic obsession, and into a murder. I mean, that sounds pretty compelling. So <laughs> this could be very interesting. The only way I can get a hold of this book is through audiobook, but it is being narrated by Stanley Tucci, who I don't know if you know who Stanley Tucci is, but I'm a huge fan. I would love to listen to four hours of Stanley Tucci's voice. So I'd be okay getting this one. Those are my three choices. Let's see what I get. Ah! Round number five. Okay, ready? <laughs> Am I ready? Oh, here we go. Okay, okay. Oh, Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut Jr. Okay, this is on my Goodreads TBR. Like I said, I've, I've wanted to read this one for a long time and it's 275 pages. Not bad, not bad at all. So I will be reading Slaughterhouse Five. If you read this, let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below. And if you've read the other two books, What'd you think about those? I'm especially curious about The Postman Always Rings Twice because I had heard about it before this, but I don't really know anything about it. So let me know if you liked it. I'd be curious to see if maybe I should listen to Stanley Tucci read it in the future. <laughs> I'm really excited about this and I'm hoping you're enjoying my series of videos. I'm having a lot of fun with these and I'm just loving the mystery of what am I gonna read next? Who knows? <laughs> so if you like this video, click the like button now and subscribe so you can see what happens for day six because I'm gonna keep going. I'm just gonna keep going until I open up all these books. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later. Bye.